Hi, David. Today we are very honored to have this opportunity to discuss with you for uh, through this online meeting. Uh, firstly, let me briefly introduce uh, Dr. David Kasper. Uh, used to work as the uh, professor of uh, South Dakota State University and uh, has uh, worked with world famous uh, companies such as Cargill and uh, MKNS. And uh, he has his own company, Casper's Copyrights. Dr. David Casper has a rich experience in uh, ruminant academic research and uh, market. Uh, today our co topic is about the uh, growth of cups. I believe it is a, um, a great concern issue for companies and farms uh, that uh, raise calves. Uh, so that Dr. David Casper, uh, could, uh, could you uh, share your suggestions on promoting the growth of calves? Yeah, yes, so we want calves on our farms to double their body weight from birth by 60 days of age. So by the time the calf is 60 days old, we want it to double its birth weight. And so our programs need to be set up to ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Both from the standpoint of high quality milk replacers or high quality pasteurized milk that would be available on the farm to get that calf off to a fast start with no health challenges so that it can gain body weight to double its weight in 60 days. Mm -hmm. um, is there any suggestion about the um, uh, managing, management? Yes, well, of course, we, when the calf is born, we want to make sure that it gets like a gallon of colostrum from its mother because mm -hmm. that colostrum is very high in immune globulins. And those immune globulins are what will provide immunity to diseases and pathogens in the baby calf. And that colostrum needs to be fed preferably within the first eight to 12 hours, but definitely the absorption of immune globulin ceases by 24 hours of age. So the more colostrum you can get into the calf at a, it within the first few hours of birth, will be a big advantage to that calf. For example, calves that do not get colostrum have a 75% chance of dying due to diseases from uh, typical pathogens like E. coli, salmonella, and clostridia. So getting the colostrum into the calf is very, very important to getting that calf off to a fast start with no health challenges. Okay, thank you, Dr. Casper. Uh, for the nutrients uh, for the calves, uh, we usually uh, add some uh, feed additive to the uh, uh, calves. Uh, could you share your suggestions about the feed, some uh, feed additives such as uh, uh, animal acids and uh, uh, minerals? Yeah, so the, the milk replacer that we currently use or I've developed is a 22-20, which is 22% crude protein, 20% fat, and it but it has the amino acid level of actually a 24% protein. So by the use of synthetic amino acids like methionine, lysine, threonine, valine, tryptophan, we raise the amino acid levels up to a 24 but we let the crude protein come down to 22, which actually makes a better amino acid energy balanced milk replacer for the calf. Mm -hmm. And this milk replacer is more, in my opinion, more properly balanced for protein and energy so that we drive frame growth in the calf from day one. And so one of the things I'm very proud of my program is, is that I get very good frame growth in these young newborn calves because it is the most economical time to put frame growth into this calf. So then later on, we can add more of a uh, 
weight from the standpoint of muscle and other development aspects of the calf. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh, is there uh, any other affiliative uh, to to promote the growth and feed intake, uh, or you, you try the in your ranch? So yes, uh, typical feed additives that we might use would be along the line of essential oils, because they have basically antibiotic-like activities, but they are not antibiotics. So our government today limits our use of antibiotics like oxytetracycline, neomycin, uh, penicillin. So, uh, we also do feed what you would call direct fed microbial. So we will feed some live bacteria in the milk replacer as well. And then along comes the biosalts that we just did the research trial on to aid in fat digestion or energy absorption by the calf. Mm -hmm. And this is where our study in the very early part showed when we were dealing with cold stress that we seen the calves fed biosalts maintain and even put on body weight, whereas the animals that were on the control levels lost weight. So they, so the calves fed the biosalts are getting more energy out of the milk replacer that they were consuming, which allowed them to have more energy to deal with the cold stress. Okay, Dr. David Kessler, uh, thank you for your uh, suggestions and uh, feedback.